Hello everyone, this is Monalisa Joshi and I welcome you to my lit YouTube channel Monalisa Joshi's Literary Sanctuary. Today I am going to tell you a story, a story about a wife and a ghost. Doesn't this sound interesting? So let's begin with the story. The Wife and the Ghost the soft clay that felt so clammy and velvety against the feet in those paddy fields, Urvija thought in herself while feeling the splashes of the drizzling rain over her flexen skin that were coming from outside the French window. This year it had rained heavily, sinking Urvija's heart and soul more. It's been long very long that she had stepped out of the mansion. The pendulum clock banged eight times. It was time for her to leave all the humdrum and rush to the humongous bedroom and be ready in her most enthralling way. Anima would come any moment and she needs to be within the room before his arrival. And the door will be shut again for the whole part of night. This wasn't bad. Nights are supposed to be spent in the arms of a lover who had the vigour to chassate his woman still being in his mid-forties. Animae Bondopadhyay, her husband, was the most renowned zamidar and barrister within the entire Koch Bihar. She didn't mind the confines of that bedroom. It was a tiny part of her prison in that entire manor house. She hadn't seen the broad light of sun outside that manor except the virgin rays that cascaded every dawn into that zamidar body and would spread all across the veranda starting from the window of her room first. She still hadn't seen some parts of that humongous household in these many years and even hadn't met the staff and all the handmaids that worked day and night there. They too had never seen their mistress's face. She had to stay with her face covered within a veil whenever she stepped outside her bedroom and only a smaller part of that manor house was she permitted to visit. That included a private small, small garden with a pond, a luxurious washing area and the dining area where she ate on separate timings alone. Even her own mother-in-law hadn't seen her face and she often thought, my son has gone berserk over an ugly peasant's girl and now he hides her away from the world. Her arms and fingers, have you seen them? One of the handmaids was once found whispering into the ears of another by the young Zamidar. They both disappeared from the manor house that night. It was half past midnight. The large wooden panes of the French window were making creaking sounds every time they were shutting and opening. Anima's hand began to search for Urvija on the other part of his king-sized bed. He woke up hastily of being not able to find her on the bed. He sat upright with his eyes probing everywhere into that vast spherical room and was suddenly amazed to see Urvija standing uncovered in front of the window with her long wavy hair falling till her loins. He rushed towards her almost falling a few times and swiftly covered her bare body with a shawl lying on one of the chairs. Urvi, he slapped her hard on the cheeks. Have you gone insane? What are you doing here like this? He prowled upon her with myriad questions but she seemed to be in a trance, not responding to any of his queries, not even fearing his wrath like earlier. She stood impassive. She seemed pale and when he touched her forehead, it was burning like fire. He lifted her up into his lap and laid her carefully over the bed. Afterwards, this became a regular episode. At midnight, Urvija would stand and stare outside the window at that old banyan tree and would often mumble something inaudible. Six months passed away and Animoy had no clue how to get his wife cured from this bizarre ailment. The news started spreading like fire. 
the whole town began talking that the young zamindar's wife has a ghost friend she is cursed the words came to his ears and anime who was not willing to allow anyone into that manor house or would take his wife anywhere for getting her cured began to deteriorate gradually from the inside he felt helpless to see his wife suffering from a ghost trouble hey have you heard the young zamindar's wife has a ghost friend whom she talks with every night and do you know i've also heard that she is like a fairy a real buxom beauty anime once heard these words at his workplace and this didn't allow him to sleep the whole night he drank heavily and dozed off the next morning when his personal butler came with a cup of tea and tried to wake him up he found out that his young master had been long dead in his sleep there were shrills of despair and lament that rose till the heaven for many days the manor house that was a much quiet place earlier grew even quieter the next chapter will be concluded in the next video thank you for st staying with me i hope you really liked my narration